This is the Kenyan teacher. We have the pleasure to present KCSE for the year 2022. This is chemistry paper two. We review question number seven, which tested salts and the mole. Part A, Roman one, give the formulae of two ionic compounds that can be used to prepare lead to sulfide salt. So to prepare lead to sulfide, we need to react two soluble salts. One containing lead to ions and the other one containing sulfide ions. So in this category, we can react lead nitrate with this formula. Remember, the examiner needs a formula, strictly formula, not name. So one of the soluble salts of lead that contains lead ion is lead nitrate. This we can react with a second salt that contains sulfide ions and sodium sulfide comes in very handy. Now, instead of sodium sulfide, we can also use the aqueous form of hydrogen sulfide, not the gas. Remember, the gas will not have sulfide ions. So those are the options available as expected responses to our question 7A Roman 1. Lead nitrate would earn ourselves half mark and either sodium sulfide or hydrogen sulfide the next half mark. To part 2. We are told two moles of aqueous ammonia reacted with one mole of phosphoric 5 acid. The question asks us to write an equation for the reaction that took place. So we would have two moles of aqueous ammonia reacting with only one mole of phosphoric 5 acid. So the question is strictly asking us to use two moles of aqueous ammonia and only one mole of our phosphoric 5 acid. It therefore means that the only product we can form here is ammonium hydrogen phosphate. That would be the only product available to be formed. In a, in, a, in a case where two moles of ammonia is reacting with one mole of phosphoric acid. So the equation is worth one mark and that is how it is obtained. If a candidate went for ammonium phosphate, it would mean that we interfere with the moles that have been given in the question through the idea of balancing. We proceed to part B. Part B is stating that solid copper 2 sulfate is available either as anhydrous or hydrated salt. So we are told that figure 4 shows the enthalpy changes involved when water is added to each solid. So this question was specifically testing on Hess law. So we have been given an energy cycle diagram here where we can start with anhydrous copper 2 sulfate to get aqueous copper 2 sulfate directly or we can obtain aqueous copper 2 sulfate from the anhydrous copper 2 sulfate via our hydrated copper 2 sulfate. By Hess law, the heat change 
for the two routes that take us from anhydrous copper two sulfate to aqueous copper two sulfate should be equal. So if we let the amount of energy up here to be delta H, then we can then use Hess law with these two heat changes given here to actually get the value of delta H. Now let's look at what the question was demanding. So we are told to calculate the enthalpy change for the process where we get hydrated copper 2 sulfate from the anhydrous copper 2 sulfate. That is represented by delta H. So by Hess law, delta H added to 12.0 kilojoules that are here. These two represent our second route through which you can get aqueous copper 2 sulfate from anhydrous copper 2 sulfate. This should give the same amount of energy as the energy involved when the aqueous copper 2 sulfate is obtained directly from the anhydrous one. So we shall write the relation delta H plus 12.0 kilojoules should give us negative 156 kilojoules if we follow the Hess law. From here, we realize that delta H is given by negative 156.0 kilojoules subtracted from the same 12.0 kilojoules. And you get the value as negative 168 kilojoules per mole. This is one mark. So we shall award a half for the subtraction and a half for the final answer, including the correct units for the heat change. We proceed to the next question, and that is part B, Roman 2. We are being asked to describe how each of the following can be prepared, starting with the aqueous copper 2 sulfate. We begin with the hydrated copper 2 sulfate. So here, we shall heat the aqueous copper 2 sulfate. We shall heat the aqueous copper 2 sulfate to saturation point. In order to get hydrated copper 2 sulfate, we shall heat the aqueous copper 2 sulfate to saturation point. Once we reach the point, we shall allow the saturated solution. We shall allow the saturated solution to cool. And when we do this, we are able to get our crystals of hydrated copper 2 sulfate. For two marks, so we shall award a half for heat, a half for reaching saturation point, a half for cooling, and another half for formation of crystals, giving us a total of two marks for that section. How about anhydrous copper 2 sulfate from aqueous copper 2 sulfate? This time round, the answer is simple. We heat the aqueous, we heat the aqueous copper 2 sulfate to dryness. When you do this, we obtain the anhydrous form of our salt. So this time it's only one mark, a half for heat and a half for dryness. To part C, which is the last part of question 7, we are told aluminium hydroxide is used as an antacid. We are, name, we are told to name another compound that can be used as antacid. This is magnesium. Magnesium hydroxide. For one mark. Then question seven ended with some calculation here from the topic mole. 
So we are told the concentration of hydrochloric acid in the stomach is 0 0.01 molar. If an antacid containing aluminum hydroxide is used, we are being asked to calculate the mass of the antacid that would be required to neutralize 100 cubic centimeter of the stomach acid. Of course, we have been given the relative atomic masses of aluminum, oxygen, and hydrogen. The first thing that a student needed to have done here is to write a balanced equation between the two substances uh, substances that were supposedly reacting in the stomach. That is aluminum hydroxide and our hydrochloric acid. So if you react the two, we are supposed to get aluminum chloride and because it is a neutralization reaction, aluminum chloride will be accompanied by some water. To balance, we need a three on hydrochloric acid and a three on water. The most important thing that we learn from this equation is that the mole ratio between our aluminum hydroxide and hydrochloric acid is one is to three. And this is where we began our adding max by giving that mole ratio a score of a half a mark. Once we have gotten that ratio, we would proceed to now calculate moles of our hydrochloric acid that was present. This we obtained from here. We had a volume of 100 cubic centimeter and molarity or concentration was 0.01 molar solution. So here we shall do 100 multiplied by 0.01 divided by 1000. So moles of hydrochloric acid in the stomach at that point were supposed to be 0 0.001 for our next half mark. From here, we are, sub we are now supposed to use the mole ratio to get now moles of aluminum hydroxide. And what we do, because mole ratio is 1 is to 3, 1 for aluminum hydroxide for every 3 of hydrochloric acid, this answer here, we shall divide by 3 to get moles of aluminum hydroxide. That would give us 0 0.00033. This division by 3, the next half mark. From here, because we are told to get mass, we now need to calculate the relative formula mass for our aluminum hydroxide. And as you can see from the relative atomic masses given, this would be 27 added to 3 times oxygen, that is 16 by 3, added to again 3 times hydrogen. And this gives 78 as the relative formula mass for our aluminum hydroxide. Next half mark is and at that point. Finally, to get mass, we shall multiply the relative formula mass by the number of moles that are there. So 78 multiplied by 0 0.00033 for the next half mark. And this gives us a, a mass of 0 0.025. Five, seven, four grams for the last half mark. Total three marks for part C, Roman two. With that, we have come to the end of our short video. In this video, we have reviewed salts and the mole as tested in the year 2022. KCSE Chemistry Paper 2. We want to thank you for your time and ask that you keep it the Kenyan teacher for more reviews of past KCSE questions.